Hey all, I'm Apoorva and welcome back to Videsified. If you're currently doing your PhD or thinking to apply for PhD, one thing you must be worried about is research paper. Not just PhD students, even masters and undergrad students also work on research papers and research papers are very important to make your profile stronger. Publishing a research paper is a very lengthy process and I'm sure you all must be having a lot of questions on this topic. So let's get to it. But before that, if you find our content helpful, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your every like, comment and subscription really motivates us to keep making these useful videos. So subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon right now. When we start thinking about a research paper, we all get these five simple questions. What is my research topic? How do I work on this paper? Where do I publish? When do I start this process? Which is a better approach, journal or a conference? And answers for all these questions differ from department to department and even advisor to advisor. Though there are so many differences, most of them follow a basic pattern. And today we have Vidur Daulatabad, who is a final year PhD student and already has 13 research papers with over 100 plus citations to talk to us about this pattern. So let's begin. Let's talk about research papers. So like how and where do you start? So uh, in our lab, at least, uh, we have like uh, uh, three pipelines where mm -hmm. you actually get your uh, publications from. Mm -hmm. The primary one is uh, your thesis. Uh, this, in these projects, you are the primary author. Mm -hmm. You lead the study mm -hmm. <coughs> and there will be other students who are actually helping you. Mm -hmm. And then there is the collaborative research okay. where um, other colleagues of your PI or uh, other universities and other institutes actually uh, reach out to you mm. for uh, collaborative research mm. and then you can publish from there too. And then there is the mentoring research uh, where there is another grad student or an undergrad or sometimes even a high school student. Mm -hmm. um, you basically mentor them, you assist them um, in their research. They lead the project but you are just a co-author there. Okay. So you can publish from all these three mm. pipelines. Mm -hmm. But, but then, Vidur, how do you start? Like, where do you get the idea from? And yeah. So most of the time, uh, ideas are usually generated by the PI himself mm -hmm. or herself. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is they already have a grant, mm -hmm. and based on that grant, they have already agenda and uh, already have project ideas they mm -hmm. need to work on uh, for supporting that mm -hmm. grant, right? Um, so usually work you usually work on them. Uh, if not, uh, you can also chip in novel ideas, and if the PI likes it, um, you they'll be happy to right. publish it. Right. right. Makes sense. Uh, so what is the life cycle of the research paper? Like where do you start and how do you get it published? Right. So it usually uh, starts with the conception of the idea. Mm. Um, the PI usually comes up with an idea um, and then you obtain the data. Um, most of the time because I'm a bioinformatician I'm basically mm -hmm. producing the perspective of a bioinformatician mm -hmm. but it could differ uh, right. in a different stream like a biomed right. stream would have a little uh, mm -hmm. different pers perspective mm -hmm. uh, but for a computational biologist mm -hmm. or a bioinformatician you basically get the data mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be your peers it could mm -hmm. be your collaborative research or it could be already published data so you get this and you finalize your methodology because you already have an idea in place you already have a hypothesis in place you just want to prove it mm -hmm. and you basically come up with the methodology and you confirm with your PIs that this is the methodology I want to follow and then once that is done the best practice is to actually write down your methods while you're actually performing the experiment itself mm -hmm. right and once you have that in place you basically compile all the results and mm -hmm. make your observations and come up with a manuscript mm -hmm. and you basically prove the, or provide this manuscript mm -hmm. to um, your PI mm -hmm. and they come back with feedback you address the feedback and you basically submit it to a journal what happens after you submit to the journal so in a peer review research what happens is um, the editor basically once you submit the manuscript the editor basically a lots um, a couple of uh, reviewers mm -hmm. who are basically experts in this domain mm -hmm. uh, these guys go through your research mm -hmm. and make sure everything is in place and what you are uh, claiming to be right is actually right mm -hmm. and they come back with comments saying that hey um, how do you uh, support this assumption mm. or how do you make sure like this claim is very significant mm. um, and you basically address those comments mm. and if the reviewers are satisfied with that then editor gives you the good news that your mm. paper your publication is accepted so then how do you find these journals and how do you know that you know this is suitable for you so um, what happens is 
most of the time you basically publish in a given set of journals mm. that are very specific to your domain mm. right so uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a given set of bioinformatics journals that we um, submit to and publish right. in right. Uh, and then there's also the there's a scale uh, on um, which is a good journal and which is like a, a smaller journal uh, and this scale is um, called impact factor is basically a quantification of um, how large is the audience that is reading this journal right uh, and depending on like how intense and extensive your work is you basically submit to that specific mm. scale of impact mm. factor right um, and usually what happens is we basically shoot it a little bit higher because mm. there's it, it's never wrong right. to actually <laughs> aim a little higher right um, but uh you basically submit according mm. to your impact factor and mm. then the paper gets mm -hmm. accepted and gets published okay so then uh, how much time does it take for the publication like once you have submitted how much time uh, will it take to actually publish so it again depends on the journal uh, smaller journals where uh, the number of uh, manuscripts that come in are less uh, it's much faster mm. uh, sometimes seven like you, your paper gets published in like two months but uh, when it comes to a bigger journal where like there is a lot of manuscripts to review for the editor uh, it takes like around six months or even more sometimes mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know there are some conference uh, journals, uh, conference publications as mm -hmm. well. So uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> what happens is sometimes uh, there are publications that are associated with the conference. Mm. These are called conference issue uh, publications. So they come out in the same journal, but as a special conference issue. So you have to present in the conference. You have to go there mm. and uh, actually present your work mm. and go through a peer review. Uh, to actually publish this mm -hmm. so uh, apart from the regular issues of this journal there will be a special conference issue where your uh, manuscript will be published mm -hmm. I totally agree conferences are so much fun you get instant feedback and appreciation and also instant reach so it is definitely fun uh, so Vidur um, usually when does a new PhD student start working on the actual research so this changes uh, from domain to domain. Um, in bioinformatics, uh, usually PhD students end up publishing at least five or six papers by the end of their PhD. Mm -hmm. But this would drastically change when you talk about a different domain like a biomed or a biotech uh, based domain. Um, in that, usually PhD students end up publishing just one or two really good quality papers uh, towards the end of their PhD. Mm -hmm. So usually uh, PhD students actually don't publish mm -hmm. in the first uh, few years of their uh, uh, PhD mm -hmm. because what happens is initially the course load is so much you invest most of your time in actually uh, attending the courses itself mm -hmm. and there is also um, it takes time to actually pick up a lab also because you have to do a lot of lab, ro lab rotations and once you're done uh, then you get to mm -hmm. actually see what uh, research there is. Uh, and then there is going to be uh, like once you start working on collaborative projects mm. and your thesis uh, then there's going to be uh, production right. of papers right right uh, so I think you have some 13 papers and 78 citations so uh, when did you start uh, working on your research papers uh, like did you do any of your research papers in your undergrad so um, I did not have any papers from undergrad uh -huh. um, but my first publication came out um, a semester after I joined the current lab I am in. Uh, okay. But that's also a little mm. quick. Mm. Uh, I uh, that was I was capable of doing that because I already had a good head start from my masters and I okay. already understood how research works and mm. I was able to write well. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so that helped me. So that's all we have for today. Hope you got a better understanding on how to publish your first research paper. If you want to watch the full interview with Vidur, you can click here and watch it. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel to encourage us. Like this video and share it with your friends and family who can get benefited with this information. And if you have any more questions, then you can ask us in the comments below. We will reply and make more videos answering all your questions. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. Keep learning. Bye-bye.